if there's any way, it's been a great pleasure talking to you and to read these pure poems and the story. And if there's anything, if you'd like to ask me any other question, and conceding the fact that I'm a bit of a, an old stupid <coughs> bollocks, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to answer. Any question, like? I tell you, if I had a room full of tennis, no, I'd give, I'd give you one each. <laughs> Maybe we should rob it all night. <laughs> anyway, that's any scale to give, any question. Yeah? What's your favourite poem, we? What? <laughs> This is Shane. What's your favourite poem and why? Thanks, Shane. What's it that? <laughs> What's your favourite poem? What's my favourite poem? Um, um, I'll tell you a poet I love and read a lot is Paddy Kavanagh. Patrick Kavanagh. I love the great hunger. Uh, and he has a little four line poem that puzzles me, and I've never understood it, but it's the most gripping idea. To be a poet and not know the trade. To be a lover and repel all women. Twin ironies from which great saints are made. The agonizing pins and jaws of heaven. Heaven punishes those it loves. That's what I get out of it, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that. How did growing up in Ballylanford and Kerry influence some of the themes in your poetry? Say, say that again. <laughs> How did growing up in Ballylongford in Kerry influence some of the themes in your poetry? Yeah. <laughs> did they influence the themes in my poetry? Yes. That was what I asked. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I loved listening to the talk. I had three teachers in the national school, which is now not. It's gone. <coughs> and I um, had a lovely family, Timmy and Riley, and brothers and sisters, and, uh, and men talking to lads in the street. It, it's a lovely little village, you know. Um, and the stories are still told. And if you're going to write, you know, cock your ear and listen well to, as you'll hear the story, you'll hear the stories everywhere. And I had them when I was a boy there. And that's how I got this book, Maloney, up and at us. And in that body, no, uh, uh, there, there was a, a play based on Maloney called Body and Soul. <laughs> and uh, it, they did tours of it around one story and it did very well, people liked it. But language changes as well as we go from age to age and year to year, you know. And so do accents. <coughs> Some people like in, I, 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 I have worked in universities all over the world now. And um, sometimes you can tell if a fella is truthful or not by how posh his accents sound. You know? And uh, I remember the first time I was in Trinity, and I had a fine, I still have, I think, a good, strong Kerry accent. There was a, an English boy there next to me, and he said, Hello. <laughs> Is that English you're speaking? <laughs> it's my attempt at it, I said. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I think that language 
and how you use it, you know. Um, I, I, a woman told me once, she said, I wanted to find out something about my husband. And I asked him one night in bed, I said, would you do me a favor? Do it if I can, he said. Would you, would you make a fact for me? <laughs> so he said, I'll try. <laughs> and she went, oh, Jesus, she said, you're the man I married always. <laughs> When did you start writing poetry? Um, I wouldn't have called it poetry, but when I was young, very young, I used to love, uh, instinctively, I love writing ballads, um, because there's a, gay, a great ballad tradition, as you know, in, in Kerry, as there must be in Cork as well. Um, and there was a bus once, went to Killarney when Kerry were playing Cork actually and the bus uh, left Killarney and, and forgot to take four Kerry supporters and they had to walk <laughs> took their way back to Valley Longford and uh, I remember trying to write a little ballad called the four they left behind. And, and one of them said to me, Jesus, that's all right. He says, well, I think there was another fellow as well. You should have called it the five they left behind. <laughs> so that was my start of, uh, of trying to write. Uh, but all of, wherever I went, like, uh, I would, whenever I went in the world, if something came to me, as I'm sure you'd like this yourself, so, you know, something comes to you and you write, jot it down on a bit of paper or even on a cigarette container and, you know, just go ahead with it and write it down and clearly as possible and maybe later develop it into a poem. Um, and, Take, take it uh, as it comes. Take, take it as it comes, as God gives it to you. Because you can always tell him, you know, I didn't like that with God. You can keep it yourself now and write it on. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my story. <laughs> uh, how much observation or research would you give to an object or subject mentioned in your poetry? What's it love? <laughs> um, how much observation or research would you give to an object or subject mentioned in your poetry? How many? Observation. <laughs> how much research would you put into a subject in your poetry? Uh, so would you read a lot about it? Or? Well, oh, that's an interesting question. Thank you. Uh, when I was doing the book of Cromwell, um, I I went to his home. I travelled over to England, and I went to his home in Ely, E L Y, and I found his letters there, and I read them, and I came back, and uh, I was asked when I came back for some reason if I would appear on the Late Late Show to talk about Cromwell, and I did. And a couple of days after that, I was walking the streets of Dublin, and a fella came up, and he ate me a punch in the jaw. <laughs> and I was sitting on the ass, and I said, why did you do that to me? He says, 
And you know, Master, he says that had the good things to say about Cromwell. I said, but I read his letters. He said, you hear a nickname that the Master is well, he said. <laughs> he says, how do we write in another, the letters of another man? <laughs> and I said, well, I had to do a bit of research. Um, and if I was to do the same, uh, the book of Judas, the man who betrayed Christ, I'd, I'd ask him, why did you do that? Why, why did you do that? Uh, it's like a little child in that poem from a three-year-old. She finishes the poem with, why? She, you know, when you think of important words, why, where, when, and how, it's, um, it's a great test. The first three begin with W. Why, where, and when. Well, if not, you could ask yourself, you know, somebody marrying somebody. Why did I marry him? Where did I meet him? And when did he ask me? And how did I reply? <laughs> there was a woman in Ali Lampard who used to say, she never gave a straight answer when she was asked, will you marry me now? And she always said, I don't know, she says. Come back next week and I'll make up my mind. <laughs> so, you know, as I was saying, Trying to get inside a mind is kind of an answer to a question. Um, because how many minds have we, by the way? <coughs> Do you ever ask yourself that? How many ways does your mind work? Is it to help? Is it to find out? Is it to ignore, you know, just get into your own mind before you try to unfathom a mind of the other. O-T-H-E-R is other. Hot, her, H-E-R, her. There's no hot in. <laughs> Last part. And uh, to, to keep educating yourself through yourself via others is uh, a great way. It's a great style of education. And it's, um, I would say, quite legal and helpful and a method that you can develop over the years, just as it has been for me today, to sense the acuteness and deliberateness and sharpness of all your minds, the way you listen. Listening is a skill on its own, and I know from looking at you that you are great listeners and God bless you all. Thank you.